Um, and here we are again. It's the fifth Thursday in a row we've, we've been sitting here talking to you, and we're so grateful that you're still showing up. Um, we've had some nice messages in from you about what you took about on purpose last week. Um, we just took, I just want to give you interrupt slightly and say we're talking about, for those who haven't been with us before. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah. That Act 3 uh, is the name of the book that we produced recently, published in, under lockdown conditions. And it usually you loosely describes the, um, the time we used to call retirement. But given that we're living longer with better health and higher expectations, we've got another opportunity to reinvent ourselves effectively at this time of our lives. And that time of our life is kind of roughly 50 onwards or so. But there's not, you know, it's different for everybody. But it's around about that kind of time of life, which you understand. So our book is about making the best of that time. And um, if it hasn't gone so well up until then, then there's still a chance you can make it go better. So that's kind of relevant for tonight's um, conversations we're going to have. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, Rebecca wrote to us and she said uh, about purpose last week, she said, thanks for another lovely, fabulous evening. They go too quickly. One of the reasons we stick to an hour is that people feel a bit zoomed out at the moment. Uh, there's so many people uh, connecting with friends, family, work on Zoom. So we, we are going to stick to the hour. Um, she said, I've been sharing nuggets with my friends on WhatsApp. Um, I loved the meaning of Ikigai. And she said there was another Japanese word that she found from her yoga class called Wabi Sabi. Hope I've said that right. Um, and uh, it's a world, it's, it's in traditional Japanese aesthetics where a world, is set, a world view is centered on the acceptance of transience and imperfection. The aesthetic is sometimes described as one of beauty that is imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. So very mysterious and difficult to pin down, but also quite inspirational. And, um, and then thank you for your reviews on Amazon. Um, means a lot to us. I wish it wasn't Amazon, but uh, there are also, other book sites. But you can also, there's a couple of reviews I saw on Waterstones of our yeah, book. You great. can review it there. You can buy it there, which is great. And somebody's written, I really enjoyed the way in which this book challenged my thoughts and the activities made me look at my relationships with others and what I want to take with me as I continue my way through the autumn of my life. So, um, yeah, we're deeply grateful um, that you're engaged and you're here and um, sending us messages. So please keep doing that. So we've been doing for after the launch, we've been doing a series of Thursdays about the four roots uh, of that we talk about in our book, um, which is based around a tree. Uh, Tilly, do you want to show us the tree um, uh, graphic? There it goes. Here it comes. So if you think of our life, your life, all of our lives as a tree, and the things we get up to, the things that we kind of are visible, as it were, are the branches. And the health draws everything up, um, holds everything up, rather. But the key thing, the most important thing that we're concentrating on these Wednesdays, Thursdays, rather, is the roots, the attitude, our purpose, our values, and our key relationships. Because if your roots are in good shape, then the tree can take a terrific battering. And some of us are, are finding our trees taking quite a big battering at the moment during this pandemic. Um, your tree will survive better if you've paid attention to those roots. So tonight we're talking about values, the third one, and we're delighted to be chatting with Errol Kennedy from Imagination and his newish wife in Act Three, uh, Bev Sage. And they got together and recently married in Act Three. So we'll get to them in a minute. And then followed after that, we'll have a Q&A and you can ask Bev and Errol some questions. So before that, we'll Ask Tilly to sort out the housekeeping. How are we going to handle this, Tilly? Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, we're so great to see so many of you coming back. Um, so just as usual, you're all muted, but can I get a wave or a thumbs up if you can hear you're well alive? We're great. Um, so there is a chat feature of Zoom. I'm going to send you all a message now um, and you can uh, contribute in this way with a little comment or a question or um, in, and we will have a Q&A towards the end. So um, if, if that is something you want to take part of, then let us know in the chat and we'll come to you. Um, this is being recorded, so, um, but only for, um, we've not shared it with anyone yet, but it is being recorded. If you contribute uh, to the Q&A with your voice, or your video, then then your video will be captured. So if you'd rather not, you can turn your video off, which is your bottom left. Cool. Thanks. Back to you. 
Lovely. Thank you very much, Tilly. So um, I'm sure if we could speak to all of you individually, you would have at least one, if not more, per people on your minds that you're concerned about um, as we're in lockdown week five. And it doesn't look like it's easing anytime soon. So um, as, as we've been doing every week, we are lighting a candle now um, that will burn brightly throughout this Act 3 Zoom uh, to think about those that matter enormously to us um, that are on our hearts and minds and perhaps are having not such a great time um, as they go through this uh, pandemic. So this is for them. So we talked a little bit about the tree and the roots and what they are. Um, so values, uh, it's a funny thing talking about values um, because often we, we think of that as actually quite a slippery subject. When we talked in workshops and with clients who we've only met for the first time, it's not always obvious what it is that we're talking about when we say values. Um, and we did, I sent, I hope you've got it uh, on the email or the mailer that you got uh, a values list, which I, I sent, tried to include, which well, if you see, I mean, you won't be able to read it on this screen, but it's, there's, this is a, just a list of values that I sometimes, and Judy does, show to clients when we're trying to get people thinking about what their, their values are. And um, it's, it's really, uh, it's a it's a crucial place to start a conversation where we're talking about who we are and where we want to go in the future isn't it and um i don't know you, tilly could you just send a put up that little um graphic we've got of the word cloud there yeah so these may not be your values but they could be somebody's values where for example in this particular case creativity is very important to them and honesty and authenticity whereas um, some other things are less important. And there's a huge, this is by no means an exhaustive list of, uh, of values words. Uh, you could, we could be here all night discussing different words that could be um, described as values. But, um, um, uh, but it, what's, you, you're, you're trying I'm, to, I'm, you're trying to say this. something. Yeah. What are you saying? What am I saying? <laughs> If while we're going through, you're looking at those words and you want to type in the chat box, it would be really ah. nice to um, hear what words you would say are your values, the yeah. things that make you behave in the way you do, that drive your behavior. So last week we talked about purpose, which is the sort of why am I here? And um, as an example, I said at the time, my, my purpose would be that I want parents to have a better relationship with their children. And the how I go about that is my values. So for me, I want integrity. I want honesty. I want creativity. I want kindness in there. Um, I want growth and opportunity. Those are all sort of big words that mean I deliver my work in that way. Well, I hope I do. That's what I'm aiming for. A client of mine and recently I was working with top of his list or very near the top was adventure. Yeah. Uh, and he, for him in his life and his career adventure, um, was very important to him and you know that may not be at all important to you so it's a funny uh, but interesting and really powerful area to talk about and I think um, some of you have asked um, about the couple called Simon and Dorothy in the book values chapter of the book who did the most amazing thing and adopted mm -hmm. three small children uh, and you know we, we use them in the values part of the book because that that decision was very much driven by well we can do something we we believe it's important to give a chance to those that have less and we can offer that and so yeah. they've gone about it with with other values like diligence hard work being trustworthy to those three small children so that as best they can for the rest of Dorothy and Simon's lives they will be accountable and 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 faithful to those three, as well as their original three biological children. So um, it was very much a, a, a values driven process for them and still is, you know, they're about five years in now, I think with yeah. those children. Um, and if you've not read their story, I would encourage you to do that. It's, it's jaw dropping. Yeah. Yeah. And some people have said, maybe, maybe it's almost too much because it makes the rest of us, you know, feel like such part timers. But on the other hand, we can all support people too who are doing amazing things like yeah. not all of us can adopt children but we can perhaps 
babysit for them or we can take a meal over or we can ring people doing amazing things and keep in touch with them. I think it, it's important as well to just, you know, you probably know a lot about values. You probably know where they come from. We don't know your starting points, as we often say, but in brief, they come from a, a large amount would come from your upbringing, from the society that you find yourself in. And of course, they can change um, over time. You know, we, we say in the book, when we first got married, we were not really interested in recycling, for example. And yeah. I can't believe it, but every single thing, wine bottles, the lot, all went in one bin and out to the dustbin outside. And now it, I cannot bear the thought of things going in the wrong containers. Um, but it wasn't important to us back then, and it is now. Identifying your values is not always that, that straightforward, which is why we have that uh, list to kind of help people uh, think about their values. So, uh, one little idea which we find useful sometimes is to remember that identifying values can sometimes be, be easier if you identify it through a negative um, experience. For example, um, someone said, you know, when he ignored what I said, it made me angry. So that tells me that that person who is speaking uh, respect and being taken seriously by that other person was an important value for them. If it hadn't been, then they wouldn't have got, got angry. That, 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 that's a kind of little indicator. And we know this pandemic that's going around is that people are focusing more on the values that really do matter for them. I don't know if you're doing this, but every now and again, I look at one of the um, stories on the BBC website of somebody who survived um, coronavirus. So they've been in hospital, perhaps they've been on death's door and they've made it and they've come back out again. Um, apparently Marianne Faithful did. She was in hospital really? for 22 days and she's on the men now. But, but in Gosh. that time and, you know, people who have things like near death experiences, all sorts of things, they, they are likely then to think, right, what is my most important thing that I want to do with my life, which is connected to purpose from last week, but then how am I going to go about it? And what are the ways in which my values will be played out and not just, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a real fashion for cushions that say, we're happy, love, um, this, is a, this is a beautiful home or kindness here or something like that. And actually, do your family experience those words in action or are they just, you know, fridge magnets and fluffy cushions? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why we don't have any of those cushions in our house because <laughs> we'd ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we doing today, Judy? Well, um, uh, we are very excited to have with us um, uh, two special guests, Bev Sage and uh, Errol Kennedy. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I'll just read you a little bit about both of them. So um, Bev Sage, so I've known Bev for nearly 40 years, which is an enormous length uh, of time. We, so we knew Bev before, independently yeah, before, before we, we knew, knew each, each other. other. Yeah, And she comes from Devon, so here we go. This Babacan babe has sparkled her way through several decades of enriching the art world through her vocals, her paintbrush or her camera. A queen of the rapping scene who has inspired many of her followers uh, me included, to dye our hair, go for the lipstick, and to make raising children a bright and creative project. She's no stranger, though, to the darkest hours a person can have. The sudden death, age 38, of her beloved Fernie, her partner in work, creative projects, parenting, and mischief. Bev's courage and optimism have won her many of life's toughest battles. Now love has struck again in Act 3, and she has found deep happiness alongside Errol. So what do we know about Errol? Well, a drummer from childhood, Errol dazzled millions around the world in the 80s chart-topping band Imagination, spawning floor filler classics such as Just an Illusion, Flashback and Body Talk. Now in his seventh decade, this entrepreneurial dad, granddad and very soon to be great granddad Errol has found love again with Bev while still beating drums. Two weeks ago, Errol drummed 24 hours non-stop, raising thousands for the NHS. Like Bev, Errol has faced the toughest mountains to climb personally, from a cancer threat to relationship breakdown. Always a smart dresser, he puts the rest of us to shame, but still keeps writing the tunes to keep us on the dance floor. So let's have a little clip of Errol in action doing his drumming last uh, two weeks back. Gosh, 24 hours of that. 
Wow. Have we got Bevan Errol with us? Are you there? Yeah. We're here. Oh, we, um, we're here. Hi. Look at them. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for welcome. coming. Welcome. Errol, have you recovered? Just about. Just about. My, when I finished, actually, my hands were like, I was wearing boxing gloves because they'd swollen. They were so swollen. Um, um, They've got so, repetitive strain. And yeah. His bottom was sore, actually, from sitting on the drum seat and his shoulders. Yeah. So he's gradually come back to... Yeah, but my, my swelling's Help. come down now. I can actually turn my ring. Oh. Well, we, we saw you start your marathon 24-hour uh, effort, uh, and, but we couldn't stay with you all night, sadly. But uh, I think you, <laughs> Bev, you, you did. I did. I made it for 23 out of the 27 hours, uh, 24 hours, sorry. And, um, yeah, I just slept from 5 till 6 in the morning. And, um, but apart from that, I was by his side, cheering him on, yeah. writing the handwritten notes. We discovered two minutes before he went on air that we couldn't get a microphone connection. So I had to handwrite oh. every message that came in. So that was, that was good. And feed him and, you know, get, make sure he's okay. And actually, you were in pain towards the end quite a bit, yeah. weren't you? So... Oh, yeah, for the last four hours, um, uh, my hands were so swollen. So Paracetamol came to the rescue. And, and uh, actually, when I look at the last bit of footage, it looked like everything was okay. <laughs> so yeah. it, was good. it did, it yeah, did, it, it did. did. Yeah, you managed to mask the, uh, the pain very well. So, yeah. so Errol, I mean, we're all doing our bit for the NHS. You know, we go out and we clap and we respond um, and we're perhaps making masks. There's all sorts of things going on. But something must have um, sparked up in you to think it was important enough for you to put yourself through such a massive physical and mental and emotional endurance test. You know, what, why did you do this? Well, I mean, I think when I look at the situation that happened to us, um, we had a fire. Just uh, our Christmas, Christmas tree caught fire, yeah. and, and in this room, the whole room sort of yeah. Went oh, wow! Flames, so, so it was so, a bit scary. Yeah, we were out of our house for like probably three months, three months. Uh, Airbnb and uh, hotels and etc. So, you know, we were in a sense a bit dysfunctional because we couldn't find order because we're running from one place to the next, and in between that, uh, Bev had hospital appointments, and so did I, and, and I was sort of like. Um, at first, they diagnosed me with uh, cancer of the prostate. And I nice. started uh, so to do MRI scans uh, and all these sort of things while mm. we were out. When you're living in your home, it's quite easy to be functionable because you know everything else. And you, you can well, it would, still be, uh, it would still be tough if, if you had that diagnosis at home, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, but then you've, you've got your home to come back to. And, uh, mm. or we, you know, and, and, and that way you find peace as well. You can deal with things a lot better as well because you're in familiar ground. Um, so we had to just, we're on, the, we're on the, you could call it the old days, we're on the road. Yeah, we were on the road, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Airbnb being, and, and yeah. particularly one night, Errol did have a biopsy. And so that was quite, um, quite something. And you were bleeding quite a lot, weren't yeah. you, in the night? And yeah. so we had to ring the National Health at about, um, I think it was about midnight. And it was extraordinary because by two o'clock, we were with doctors in Homerton Hospital sorting everything out. So, you know, from Errol's perspective and mine, the NHS were phenomenal to us just before this happened. Yeah. And, you know, brought things around. And of course, five years ago, I was bald, sick and radioactive with breast cancer. And um, the NHS yeah. to me were at the Marsden, you know, really saved my life alongside friends and family and various other yeah. great mm. things. But Absolutely. yeah, we're hugely indebted. Yeah. And I think we felt quite, um, there was so much about our lives that we had to focus on ourselves all the time, yeah. getting the house sorted out. You know, we had 90 square meters of wooden flooring delivered in the wrong color, which was quite challenging. So that took a day to load into our flat and then we saw it was the wrong color. So it took a day to take out reorganize and it, reorganize it. it. And so yeah. things like yeah. that happen when you're yeah. doing houses and um, changing things around. And yeah. bearing in mind a rushing we're both rushing and to and fro from hospitals as well, dealing with all these situations. And just to say as well, you know, my mother, she's had cancer twice and uh, she's 85 now and she's still mm -hmm. strong. So, you know, and that was a blessing because we almost lost her, uh, um, you know, back in the, in the first time when she had cancer. She also had what Bev had was breast cancer and then she had lymphoma as well, and uh, which is kind of pretty horrific because it's like, Cancer just goes all up her body and so forth. But we were grateful for that, for her uh, coming out of that. So, you know. So lots to be thankful for with the NHS. Lot. And yeah. then we, you know, by nature, we're both 
creative project people, yeah. whatever the situation, however dark it may be, you know, one of our values is to kind of look at it as joyfully and positively and yeah. creatively. And of course, Errol's a great drummer. So immediately it was like, what can I do to make a difference? And the best thing was for him to drum. Yeah. And, to, and he said, right, I'm going to do three days. Well, and I went, three days? <laughs> Three days. Three, days. Three days. Okay, that was the original. Yeah, yeah. But and then it got sort of edited down to uh, yeah. you were, and you were. He was actually at twenty three, and he said, "Have I got to go for another twenty four hours?" <laughs> but fortunately, it stopped yeah. at twenty four. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, and it was for all the things that's just been said. We we just felt, um, from a value point of view, we just felt that we had to sort of value all the things that have been done for us. We were thankful, um, I suppose thankfulness yeah. was our value on that really yeah. mm -hmm. for ourselves. And also we've got a friend friends on the front line at Homerton Hospital, you know, nursing and like you were saying, Jude, you know, mm -hmm. it's really unc I mean they're what they're facing, it's like um, you know, yeah. frontline battleground and so anything we could do. And we're on lockdown and it was hilarious, yeah. really. I mean, I mean, obviously Errol was going to the very edge, but you know, here I am running in and out with bits of food, helping with bananas when he got cramp. And, and you're, you're living in a flat. You're not in a big mansion, in a big rock star mansion. You know, that room that you saw, um, really those, those discs had only just been sorted for his, Errol's Christmas present after 20 years in a sort of broken yeah. down <laughs> and they were hammered up on the walls about an, two hours before the gig, really, exactly. <laughs> before it went live. So. Yeah. so how much did you raise? And you're extending the project, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, so far we've raised um, um, over 7,000 plus, so it's, all, it's still Whoa. Well yeah. done. It's <laughs> really good. Amazing. And, um, amazing. and then, you know, with that said, we just thought, well, gosh. Yeah, two, two or three days later, I said, well, maybe I could do it again. Oh, look, I'm not you know, let's talk about how we how maybe it could be different These this time <laughs> and so we talked about it being a marathon and that's the plan really isn't it to yeah. do a drumathon 2020 we're even talking to the guinness book of records tomorrow to see if possibly yeah. it could be done parallel with that but the, oh, obviously the main name is raising funds for the nhs but with 14 master drummers yeah that um, you've kind of called together yeah. and uh, so, so with with those guys, it just means that we can maybe drum for seven days at twelve, 12 hour hours. periods, and and you have a uh, um, within twelve hours you've got to, it's forty five minutes that you have, but you break those up into ten minutes breaks, as rest periods. As yeah. your rest period, so it's a quite it's quite a big quite a big challenge. But I think for for what's going on now in the world and the NHS and to try and, you know, and for us being able to contribute to that, it's, a, it's like... It's a, a very small ask small in some ask, respect, really. says me who's not drumming. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're doing the bananas, Bev. Yeah, I'm yeah. just doing the bananas. It's good. Yeah. Queen of bananas. Oh, that's fantastic. Can I be very cheeky and ask how old you both are? Yeah. Wow. I've never told the truth. I don't usually tell the truth. <laughs> but no, I'm 65. No. <laughs> You're a year older than me, Bev. I'm about, I'm about to... I think my pension comes through in May. I think I've got another month before the pension, and I get free trips around London on the buses if I ever took them. Yeah. Next yeah. Well, Errol? I'm a pensioner, actually. Yeah. I'm actually a year older. I'm his toy girl. So, I'm, <laughs> so in June, June the 9th, I'll be uh, 67. Amazing, amazing. And mm. still drumming. And Bev, you're, you're very much a full-on artist. You've reinvented yourself a number of times in the years yeah. I've, I've known you. And you kind of found each other again in Act Three because you met many years ago when you were on tour. And Bev, you were part of that tour, weren't you, with, with yeah. uh, Steve, yeah. your first husband? We actually met um, in America, in Atlanta, when I was with Modern Romance and Errol was touring. We were the first sort of bands coming from the British scene across yeah. the dancing with Paradise Garage and all the big clubs that were opening Studio up, the dance interior, Studio for all that yeah. scene. And we met then, back in the yeah. day, and then we came back and yeah. suddenly and I was then, all... It, well, it was quite uh, amazing, actually, because we were setting up for the tour. We were launching from the Dominion and... Um, Imagination's you know, first, first tour, uh, Very, very first tour, which was a, a right across the, um, the UK and also throughout Europe. And um, we, we sort of said, oh, who was supporting and it was the techno twins. We were like, wow. <laughs> okay. So we were, you know, and that that and yeah, we went off uh together as a team. For about a year, for, really. for, it for a year, yeah, touring yeah. 
um, Europe just, and uh, you know with Steve and it was a great team and um you know, and we, we did quite well. I remember when we did Paris, it was unbelievable. I've never seen so many candles in my life. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a great thing, unbelievable. Actually, it was massive, yeah. So, so, you know. We've, and we've, Willie was lighting us, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was, that that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it was, you got off to a good friendship back then, and then sort of 40 years later. Um, and after a lot of ups and downs, both of you, in yeah. the intervening um, years, since you got together, so... After all of those big dramas in your life, what values now are you prioritising as a couple? I think our biggest value is, is love, right? And, and, and um, comes love, comes all the other things that comes underneath all that. And, mm. you know, um, one of them is also um, being able to be uh, supportive, being able to be uh, supportive and caring and... Um, Part of that, we are very adventurous as well. And, yeah, and I think I think we were talking about love because we we sort of did these values on our own, then came together and realised yeah. that we crossed over on on the main things that we you know we agreed on the way. Yeah. But we thought of love as it's kind of an umbrella because at times love is love is really tough. It's really mm -hmm. tough, and uh, it can be quite a lonely space, and yeah. you know it can feel like you've you know, when you're on your own and you're not understood, you're in a wrong relationship, which we've both been in, um, you know, uh, things are tough. And then you live a single life after being battered by that, perhaps, and learning to um, to be alone. And love, so love can be tough, yeah. but then it can be full of forgiveness and justice and truth and honesty yeah. and all these things that can can come underneath it. And I think more than anything for us, choosing positivity and love each day we try and put some time aside just at the beginning because we know we, we were really interested in what you were saying last week about um your mot in relationship and we yes. kind of really valued that as a as a way of looking at things because we we also try each day to begin the day with yeah. a clear up you know um, and, and a quiet space which is how the christmas tree caught fire because i left a candle on when someone rang upstairs <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah, but yeah, and, and I, I think obviously importantly as well is is being able to be truthful as well because then when you're truthful, mm. you can deal with. There's so many things that comes with that, and hence going back to when um, you know we we were out of our home and we had to deal with so many different things, and and to be able to have compassion, to be able to have time to sit back and not when it really really got tough and not to be able to see you know to be able to see that each other's couple, point of view really and, and say what do you need yeah you know what what are you feeling what yeah. how how is it yeah. you know and, so i think i think love for us is the deepest yeah. motivator and then sort of from that we thought actually it's about being thankful which was what drove us and, yeah. and that positivity and joy because i think thankful you know, for what for this, the, the health we have, yeah. for the joy we, we found, for the possibility of still being able to make decisions. However, I, I suppose, I mean, I, my mum was um, not well. As a child, I grew up with a schizophrenic mum who was diagnosed with chronic schizophrenia. She was incredibly creative, absolutely stunningly beautiful. And my dad and her had a great loving relationship. They were married for 50 50 five years I think mm. yeah and um you know so lots of fantastic things but I saw toughness very early I saw the dark side early on and I always wanted to be play and be well I was a child so I wanted to play and be joyful around it so I I learned early on that even when times are really tough if you can bring a little bit of joy people will find you so I, and you'll find yourself in a new way, perhaps, mm -hmm. in that situation, if you can find that, because it's not always possible. Sometimes the tears are too much and sometimes it's too tough. But how, when you can. How do you, what's the, the, the line between being joyful in a difficult situation and, and actually ignoring it or being in denial of it? Uh, yeah, well, that's an interesting Yeah, one. I don't think it's a question of being in denial. It's, 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 really how you do, as a couple, how you deal with the situation. You can either really start shouting at each other and, and which doesn't really solve the problem. But if, you know, um, first of all, is you, you have to go, well, okay, forgiveness. 
and come with that. And, and then you can, you're able to talk about the situation to find um, how you can both be best, should I say, solve the situation and how you can then move forward. And, uh, yeah, and I think it's know. an interesting observation that because sometimes, you know, I've been in situations where it's been so sad, you know, I mean, when I hit 38, within two weeks of, of Fanny dying, I, my mum had had a leg amputated and my, because she had um, uh, um, osteoarthritis and Fanny died and the car was stolen. And I bumped into a really lovely neighbour called Professor Gregory, who, who actually built the exploratory and, and uh, the observatory in, in Bristol. And he said to me, Bev, I'm having a really tough week. He said, really tough week. He said, my car's been stolen. I said, I'm so sorry, Professor. I said, guess what? I said, my husband's, I've lost my husband, lost my car, and my mother's lost a leg. And he just went green, you know, and we just laughed. Because when life <laughs> is so bad, it's yeah. all you can do. And so mad. I mean, then it wasn't bad. There was a joy even in that, oddly yeah. enough, you know, that you can find sometimes, are we, as humans, we have such a capacity for finding amongst the rebel you know the yeah. rubble some little chinks of light and and yeah. what what's my life been i've been so blessed compared to so many others it's like true never home you know i mean or, that, that that's, you know, that's a so. great word i mean being blessed and and in situation you think but well, you know what we are blessed uh, we've got each other and we're in good health and in that way as well when you remember those things then you can meet challenges as well i mean i'll give you an instance for all the things that were going on i have to go back to that because it was everything was very epic as well and and we, you could be very close to losing the whole situation i mean for instance again you know as been said we're living in hotels we're living in airbnb some of them not wasn't actually that brilliant to the point where Bev was coming up in rashes as well <laughs> in the whole situation. But we could have, yeah. we could, we could have just turned and says, "Oh, woe is me, woe is me." But we, we turned it more into fun, um, and 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 draw from that way uh, of being, um, and the trust between us as well, because that that was what the situation. It was only going to make it worse. Well. Actually, it would have made it worse. We'd have got. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, and then we, we're coming out of the, the supermarket and crossing the road and a car drives into Valentine's car. night. Somebody yeah. drove straight into my car. Yeah. yeah. It was and we, great. We've got all these other things going on, right? And a car drives into... We've got more insurance claims going on than <laughs> anyone could yeah. ever... Every, every time something happens. Business, you, know, you know, so and then again, um, we could have just kicked off and, and uh, with, with the whole thing, but... We, we just looked at the whole situation and we just took it on board. And, and, said, and okay. one of the things we say as well is what, what are we being taught? What lessons? Since, are, what, what is it we need to mm, listen about yeah. here? Where are we? Exactly. Where's you know, the learning? Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, I'd love to say that with all these experiences, I'm wiser and understand and have answers, but you, I still always say, learning, make the same mistake. You make not the same mistakes, but new ones. Yeah. And you're learning all the time. Always. And in every situation and every event, every, every daily event that we're going through. I mean, everybody's on lockdown now. And it, it, it's, it's, we've never been on that. And, and it's still a learning event. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. different things coming out of people. You're hearing people who are living together um, marriage are breaking down and, and they should have really had the pack three because then yeah. that would have been really <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> yeah, that, well, yeah. we, thought, we thought love was the, the real yeah. overall and we cheated by putting lots into that, you know, kindness, yeah. compassion, Passion, yeah. justice, forgiveness, all those kind of yeah. lovely it's things that are lessons of love, really. Mm -hmm. And then thankfulness was, you know, really something and a positive joyfulness around what we want to do and then creativity you know this playful spirit and um you know for both of us when we when we met again you know we were kind of mm, we both I mean I'd I'd remember really I'd been single for five years and wanted to stay that way you know I was dating dead artists as I was saying I think I, I wouldn't release myself on another human being again just in case I was as dreadful as my last husband said I was <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be much safer if I stayed with dead artists like Salvador Dali and Picasso. They didn't answer back. They did interesting projects worldwide. And I could just talk to them, you know, and, just, you know, and they wouldn't say anything. They'd go back to bed at night and I wouldn't have anyone shouting at me. It was brilliant. 
So when I met Errol again, it was brilliant because we did know each other in our 20s. So we had that energy yeah. and that trust and that yeah. sparkle in a way, I think. Yeah. And I didn't think that we'd ever, you know, we, we didn't have plans for that because we were both doing projects. We were both up to our neck in it. Weren't we? Ex really exactly. Doing yeah. projects and I was an artist. Yeah. And, and when you're... you're, you're uh, Dreams we, is an artist. Exactly, yeah. and we were, we're in Act Three, and and there's in, and when you laugh as well in at our age, there comes a lot of trust that comes into that because you are really giving of yourself, it's and you've got like lots of, of responsibilities. Yeah. You know, I mean, Errol's got that. a massive family; they're just amazing. Yeah. You know, you know. Uh, mm. uh, and um, and mine are pretty fun. Well, they're awesome, you know, too. So, yeah. it, but it's just, um, yeah. And, and amazing how you can get things so easily wrong. We, yeah. we thought our kids would want us to run off and get married incredibly quietly and not tell anyone. Because it would all be very embarrassing and far too late and too, you know, all that stuff. But so we told them on my birthday and we were going to go and see The Incredibles at the cinema afterwards. I was so excited that we were going to do this thing. And they were just mortified. Yeah. We had to cancel all our plans. It was the most dreadful thing we yeah. <laughs> because they said, but you are so special. We want you to celebrate your love. We don't want you to disappear. And, and because of their standing up and say, speaking their truth, truth. to us, yeah. Yeah. we ended up with the most amazing wedding. Yeah. Of which yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were there. We were delighted to be there. So, so just, um, you know, from where you are now to where you want to get to, as, as, you, as you know, in, in the way we've written the book, the, the people who are having a good time, a contented sort of experience in Act 3, a lot of it comes from looking ahead and not, as we often say, walking into the future backwards. So given how much has happened to you, um, are you planning types? Are you making making plans for say the next ten years, five years, five minutes? You know what what if, what are you learning from what's happened, and what are you taking forwards? I think one of the things that we're learning from everything here as well is about listening as well, and that's one of the things that we do with each other. We we you know we listen, mm -hmm. and I think that's come up really important to listen to each other and how each other is feeling, and that helps you as well to make forward planning as well and we're not ever so good at forward planning which almost saves us from what happens because we dive fully and embrace the situation we're in um so i would think i mean we we, we have, have we do try hard to yeah plan we, more but it was like before lockdown we were meant to be perhaps potentially being canada on a drum because errol's an entrepreneur and is he invented a drum tuner and all sorts of great things so we were going to go to canada and we were invited to Venice, and, and we didn't go anywhere because we were on lockdown here and Errol had an operation. So we adapted to that without upset yeah. because we hadn't planned so intensely that we couldn't let go. So I think one of the things is um, very, if you love something, let it go. So yeah. we love planning, but we also are quite happy to do it with the light so, and let go so yeah. it doesn't... Yeah. Because, I think it sounds like your experience and, and all of the things you've both had separately and together has, has shown you that that you need to hold life a bit lightly as well because you don't know what's going to be coming around the corner. So there's this there's this sweet spot of making plans, making dreams, and working on things according to your values, but at the same time being realistic that mm. who knows what's happening tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, with, with, with what your history's taught you so far. So I'm just looking at the clock and thinking, um, uh, lovely people out there listening to all this good stuff from Bev and Errol. Um, we've seen some comments coming in and questions. So if you've got questions for Bev and Errol, comments. Tilly, what have we got? Hello. Okay, so um, I would like to come to Sylvia Brown first. Uh, hi, Sylvia, you're unmuted. Hi, hi. Oh. Hi. Hello. 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 What's your question, Sylvia? Um, well, just bear with me. Um, sorry. I mean, no, I haven't really got a question. I was asked if I'd like to speak at the end, but uh, uh, talking about the values um, at the beginning, I think the values and purpose for me kind of interlock, intertwine quite a lot. Absolutely. So, um, like, for instance, I said in, in the comments that um, in just two years ago, myself and my husband had become foster carers. And that's something that we wanted to do for a really, really long time. But we were waiting for the right time and we feel that that is now. But that is coming out of our values and our purpose. They, right. they're, they're both very much part of the same thing for me, really. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah, and also just to quickly, just to say, I did say also in the comments, I did went to see Imagination way back in the eighties. <laughs> Fantastic! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Where did you go, Sylvia? Do you remember? I can't quite remember. It might have been Earl's Court, but I can't quite remember no. where it was. But I went with a friend and we thought it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh, well, Thank we you think you're much. brilliant doing the foster caring now. So yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best with that. Amazing. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Cool. Um, so, Stephen, uh, so yeah, if you have a question for Bera and Errol people, then put it in the comments and we'll come to you. Um, but Stephen had a thought um, about his values. Stephen, you're unmuted. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Thank you. Hi, Stephen. Um, Hi. Oh, look at the painting. First of all, <laughs> great painting. It's like you like it. Pollock behind yeah. there. It's great. Fabulous backdrop. <laughs> yeah. Actually painted by the husband of a niece of mine. And I've never got tired of it. I love it. It's brilliant. <laughs> right. I love it. Great. <laughs> yeah. Now, I was, well, first of all, to Bev and Errol, wow, can't we do a 24 hour listening session to them? <laughs> 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 they were oh, fabulous. Wow. Thank you, Bev and Errol, very much. Oh. Um, no, I, I was amazed when I looked through my list today and realized. I was surprised at what I chose as my values, first of all, and then realized how many of them I felt I have, let, have fallen asleep, as you put it. And that kind of saddened me in one way, because I thought, well, there are some values there that I let go of. And um, it was a kind of wake up call in a way. So mm. I just wanted to say thank you for that. Well, uh, are you, thanks, Stephen. Are you willing to say what they might be, the ones that you want to kind of wake up a bit? You don't have to, but... Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's slightly difficult to say. <laughs> um, uh, honesty was one of them. Mm. And I thought, oh, you know. Um, and I, it has always been a value, actually. But I've realized in the last 15, 20 years, I've let that slip a little. Hon oh. could, are you willing to say honesty in relation to a particular thing? Because honesty is a very broad yes. word, isn't it? Yes. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's difficult. <laughs> no, you don't have to say. You don't have to say. Yeah, it's regarding personal issues and yeah, sure. relationships where I have not been entirely truthful. And that's okay, yeah, mm -hmm. being yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being myself. Yeah, yeah. And does that feel um, like something to prioritise in Act Three for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, can I just ask, if you don't do that, if you didn't? have that level of honesty at this stage what does that do for a person it devalues myself a little yeah yeah, um, yeah. And that it's not a great feeling um no so th that's thank mm, you for that that's you. really great yeah i think you're being very honest coming on this and <laughs> saying that to all of these people listening in yeah. Right. yeah 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 and was there something else that you you wanted to Point out. Uh, but this is what, the interesting one that came up as one of my three, and that lovely list you provide in the book, um, which is a great way to kind of stimulate thought about all of them. Um, but enthusiasm was one of mine. And I realized that you know, yeah, because I still do a lot of dancing, I always go into a class absolutely brimful of enthusiasm. Um, yeah. Stephen, Stephen, can I just say, introduce you to the group? Yeah. Um, Are you prepared to say what you do for we, a living? We've so? only met you once, but mm. you're in the book. Uh, as someone who spent his whole career, as I understand it, doing something that you didn't really want to do. It was second best kind of thing. Mm. What, I, what I really wanted to do was dance. And um, yeah, and about and I, my 70th birthday is coming up in, Christmas, in December. But about five years ago, I did an audition for a company and got in. And um, when I can now, uh, work as a paid dancer. <laughs> so you, you, you're, yeah. you're the man who became a professional dancer in his 60s. Act three. Act three. Act three. Fantastic. It's really, three dancers, really, yeah. really fantastic. Wow. Love it. I'm blushing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're blending into the artwork. It's lovely. Yeah. It's Hooray. great. Yeah. Brilliant. It's great. Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. Lovely. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen, very much. Tills? Cheers. Uh, okay, so uh, Peter Underwood, um, you put a great thing about uh, Bev and Errol. Hi, Peter. Can you hear us? Hi, Peter. 
actually Patricia. <laughs> Sorry, it was uh, it was actually Patricia who wrote it. Sorry, oh. Patricia. Hi, Sorry. Patricia. Hi. Hi, Hi Peter. So we're sharing a machine. It's less feedback. Yeah. Was there a question or a thought? It was just a thought about about forgiveness. I think it's um, it's a really powerful value for me, um, and it, it, it's one of those things you have to keep uh, you have to keep trying with. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's very it's kind of core value, but it, it's it's about um, maybe it gets easier with age. You kind of understand. I mean, I, I you know I manage a lot of people, and some of them would drive me absolutely crazy. But, but I, you know, I try to say, well, I, I can see sometimes why they did something. Um, and I try and be quite forgiving, even if the consequences are often terrible. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you just have to move on with them. And uh, mm. it's about how you then develop a relationship. Mm. Um, yeah. So it, it sort of underpins love, it underpins friendship. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's I think I think forgiveness. You have to develop. Mm. I agree with you. I think forgiveness is one of the most profound and powerful of all mm -hmm. of these values, mm -hmm. because it enables us and them to move on. Mm, the release it gives. Yeah. is um, I agree with you. Is it's, is unparalleled, really. Yeah. But I think as well, it's 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 one of those things that with the with the experience and and the life miles we've done by this point, you yeah. you you can go there perhaps a little bit more easily because you might have had some evidence that you've done it and it worked and it made 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 a big positive difference. Um, you know, I think as we're mellowing at this point, perhaps we can forgive a bit more easily. Yeah. As I say, it's, it's often misunderstood because it's not necessarily about the other person changing. Mm. No. It's about us mm. taking the step to, to kind of bridge that gap. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely. Lo lovely, lovely thought. Thanks, Patricia. Yeah. Tilly. Uh, hi, Alistair. Um, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Alistair. Hi. Hello. Hello. Julian Adrian. And thank you. I've just so enjoying this. And uh, what? Thank you to Bev and Errol. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, sorry, your question or my question? <laughs> oh, no. What was your question? Do you have a question for us? No. Or a was, comment? Uh, or just a? No, it was more uh, an observation. I, I, I thought that I, I really love that thing about loving kindness. Or for me, it's loving kindness is, is how I've interpreted, it. and that it's not something soft and fluffy. It's quite a gritty thing, and it's an everyday just small acts of kindness, uh, I, I realise how important they are. And, but it can get all a bit heavy and a bit serious. And I think that, um, I think actually it was Jane was saying last, was it last week, just about not getting over heavy about it, but with some lightness thrown in. And mm. that, that for me. Fun, yeah. yeah, fun yeah. And, and a, a touch of mischief if necessary. Well, you're good at that. <laughs> but, uh, Thank you. Thank you. And, and also, Stephen, I, I thought that made me, reminded me that authenticity, just that real, that realness of, of uh, acknowledging that we, it's, it's difficult to be honest in all. It's so difficult. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it is so difficult to be authentic. Uh, I think for some people, maybe other people, I'm guessing, have, have an easier time of it. I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's a real struggle sometimes. It's easy stuff to say, but mm, actually yeah. living sure. it mm -hmm. and actually then really challenging ourselves be willing to to challenge it you know you know not, again not not uh, uh, in, a, in a difficult heavy way but i think that's that's a great it's a great attribute and as a parent i feel it's a kind of a bit of a terrible responsibility to think i don't want to mold my children into something that is not them um i mm. i want certain things for them in one way but another way i want them to find their own stuff mm. and um it's very easy, I think you hear stories and it's happened to me of, of being um, kind of feeling like you have to go down a certain path because of the way the parents and the, and the environment um, told you to go basically, uh, mm. effectively. Well, it, it, and again, a lot of us have very deeply ingrained messages from our childhoods of what our parents did stand for. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they might have been very vocal about their values, but actually perhaps that wasn't what you saw in action. Yeah. Um, somebody like me working with many parents for a long time now, um, it's one of those things that comes back again and again, yeah. is, um, is wanting to be 
you know, a, a good and moral and upright citizen, but actually that's not how you're treated at home. So yeah. there's a mixed message there, which leaves, leaves us wondering, well, what are my values? Because I, I didn't get very good uh, representation of them. Yeah. And the, the courage at the sort of act three stage to really face up to some of that, because you could have just been so easy to have just been sort of um, caught up in stuff and go, gone on a certain route because that's expectations and the way it was sort of tram lines. Yeah. So that's, that's, right. that's yeah. what I really enjoyed digging around a little bit on that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very rich. So thank yes. you. Yes. Oh, OK. Thanks. Thanks for being on the call. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Luc Lucinda Sparrow had a question. Uh, Lucy doesn't have the video, I don't think, but you're unmuted, Lucy. Can you hear us? Yeah. Um, I, what I was thinking about, and some of the, I love the list that you put down, Adrian, but it was some of them sort of doubled up for me. Sure. Yeah. And is that a, a thing that is feasible? Oh, what do you mean by doubled up? Some of them were, well, there was a repetition. Yeah, she, no, well, not, not necessarily repetition, but I mean, things like recognition and to be known sort of go together for me and yeah. connectedness and community, that sort of thing. Oh, I see. Yes, mm. yes. I mean, they, absolutely. Mm. There's, a, there's a relationships naturally mm. between some of them that you might see, or some might see more than others. And the other thing is, many times I've done this with clients and there's a word that they think, oh, it's got to be on there and it's not on there. Well, I just say, well, write it in, you know. Write it in, yeah. yeah. It's, well, this is not a, an exhaustive list. And these words are not right, in inverted commas. Mm. They are, it's just a stimulus, really. Mm. It's to get the old thought process going. Because yeah. as we said at the beginning, it's a slippery area to discuss this. Because, you know, people have told me, you know, they work for a company. It's in that, this chapter in the book about values, about... Uh, there's a guy who said you know, the company's values are this, this, and this. But in fact, if you know, if you work there, it's a million miles from mm. those things. Mm. So that's it's how it's actually lived mm. uh, and mm. experienced. That that's the thing, isn't it? Rather than lip service. Mm. So words. I mean, I come from a words business myself in advertising. You know, don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> No, Make but you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> Make, invent them. Yeah, Make exactly. up new ones. You, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm noting, and have we got time for one or two more, Tills? Thank yeah, you. Great. So um, Bernadette, are you happy to chat? You had a thought there about Bev and Errol. Can you hear us, Bernadette? Whoops. Hello? Oh, perhaps we've lost I Bernadette. No, sorry. I was, um, I lost my internet connection. <laughs> But you're here now. Yeah, it's just video for Bernadette, so go for it. Yeah. Oh. Hello, hello. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I uh, I lost my connection. Um, Have you got a question, Bernadette? Can, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm afraid when I lost my connection, my question got lost as well on the chat. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I, I can see it here. It says, yeah. I oh. think what I'm taking from Bev and Errol is that it is healthier not to overinvest in specific areas of life in order to be able to not get entrenched and have more to lose. Ooh, that's interesting. Bev and Errol, what did, how would you respond to that? That's, oh, an in, that's, that's interesting. That's very interesting, actually. I mean, Cause, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, gosh, if it's playing out like that, wow. Um, I mean, I think, I think you can't help but invest in relationships. Uh, I mean, I don't think... Mm, that's, that's a very interesting question. Uh, uh, it's investing, but with a light touch, I think, that yeah. I, would, um, I would say. I mean, you, you, it's giving with all your heart to something, but at the same time realising that you... I, there's a great Tarkovsky quote, actually. He said, the purpose of art is to prepare a person for death. And I think it's got quite a resonance here because... It's about the fact that when you do creative projects, you often have to let them go and you can't hold them tightly. You have to let them go and sometimes rip them up, sometimes bin them, sometimes they fly away. Sometimes they stick and are amazing, like just an illusion. Yeah. Um, but, you know, often, often things just go and it doesn't mean you love them any less or, you know, invest any less. You, you do give your a creative process is to you give your heart and soul. And I think that's the same in in relationships. I think that, you know, you don't hold back. I think you do at the time, you know, uh, it, you, you, you mean every bit of it in 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 the moments that it's in front of you. Um, yeah. 
but sometimes with hindsight looking back you can see that perhaps where it started to unravel will become um tricky but the i think the heart is is on its own journey and and that's one of the great mysteries of it it is unstoppable like for example i've been married twice and both times i said those vows and i meant them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you by one and I did it too. <laughs> yeah. How many times you did it, Errol? Well, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if we got time for one more question, Till. Uh, one more thought, well, we're actually one minute to, well, we're, one, we're almost at quarter past. So oh, just, okay. okay. Amazing contributions in the chat. Lots of people saying how belief and honesty um, amongst other things are kindness, helpfulness, genuine honesty, awareness of the whole wide world, letting go, loads of great contributions. So thanks to everyone who wrote in. And also, um, as, a, as a little exercise, pick one value that means a lot to you and focus on it this week. Just see what happens when you prioritise one value. That's a thought. Um, thank you for all your continued comments and uh, questions and thoughts you've been emailing in. Please keep that coming in. Um, it means a lot and it helps us shape what we might do next week. We'll be back for key relationships, the last of the four routes, and um, we'll bring you some goodies then. But we have to do a huge thank you to Bev and Errol for your honesty and um, your grace and truthfulness uh, mm. that came through loud and clear and I'm sure has helped a lot of people on this uh, Zoom tonight. Um, and um, uh, stay well. We also want to just say... The book is available to sell. Uh, still, yes, available yeah. uh, on Waterstones, yes. uh, Amazon, your Eagle, usual outlets. And, uh, yes, and if you want to write a review, you don't have to buy the book to write the review. Yes, apparently. it all so, helps. Uh, it all helps. But we want to you. obviously look after yourselves, stay well, protect the NHS, um, and of course reinvent yourself according to your values in Act Three. So I think we're going to go out with a dance. Are we? Great.